Welcome. My name is Marie, and it is the second quarter of the Teens Cornerstone Connections Bible Study Lesson. In Lesson 4, we have Baraka, or the mission story. In the orchestra, we have Shadrach on the piano, Sakai on the trumpet, George and Lee on the saxophones, Subira on the clarinet, Amy and myself on the violins. Lastly, we have the Sabbath School panel, which is done by the Nairobi Central Teens along with their teen teachers. Enjoy! Hi, my name is Baraka and I'll be taking us through the fourth mission story for this quarter. This story will, come, will be coming from the country of Portugal, and some interesting facts about Portugal are, Portugal is one of the oldest countries in Europe, dating back to the year 1143. In 2001, Portugal decriminal, decriminalized drugs, and the Seventh-day Adventist Church in Portugal has only 9,611 members. Today's story will be centering around nine-year-old Carlos who goes to a Seventh-day Adventist elementary school in Portugal. The only reason he does this is because it's closest to his home. Other than that, neither he nor his family are Adventists. Upon, after being in the school for some time, he began to notice that the Adventist church is different from most churches that he was used to going. They had no saints, they didn't baptize their babies when they were born. And Carlos found this very strange. He began to ask himself many questions. Why do we have Sunday and you have Saturday, he asked. Why do we have saints and you don't have saints? Why do we baptize when we are born and you do not? He asked this question to his parents who answered the, to the best of their ability. However, he wasn't satisfied with their answers. He began to have debates with many of his classmates back at school to try and understand more about the Seventh-day Adventist church and why they were different. He soon began to realize that no matter how much he tried, he wasn't able to come up with answers from the Bible as to why their church was different from the Seventh-day Adventist church. Unlike him, his classmates were able to back up what they said from the scripture. Carlos began to realize that the Seventh-day Adventists do this out of love for God. They follow God's commandments. They follow the Bible. And that's why he, and that's why he wasn't able to win any of the debates with them. In the book of John, chapter 14, verse 15, it says, If you love me, keep my commandments. Carlos also loved God very much, and at the age of 16, he gave his heart to Jesus and was baptized. His entire family came to watch, and now Carlos is a leader in the Seventh-day Adventist Church. He also joined the Pathfinders, and he really enjoyed earning the honors and participating in other activities. This quarter, your 13th Sabbath offering will help open a new Seventh-day Adventist elementary school in Setúbal, Portugal, so other children's lives can be changed, just like Carlos. Happy Sabbath. Happy day. Happy day. Happy, Happy Sabbath. Sabbath. Um, it's another day that we are going to seek uh, the face of the Lord through our lesson discussion. Uh, but before we jump into the lesson of the day, I would like us to have a word of prayer through uh, by our brother Salman. Let's pray. Our kind and loving Father, thank you for being with us this Sabbath. Please guide us and protect us as we go through this 
lesson that you may be known. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. 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 Apply the blood. That's the topic of our lesson um, for today. But uh, before we start um, the lesson discussion, I would like us to introduce ourselves and then we jump into the lesson. I will start from uh, my far right. Right. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy, Happy day. day. And uh, welcome to a lesson. My name is Jonan Magana. Happy Sabbath. Happy, Happy day. day. I am Salmon Sipakachi. Happy Sabbath. Happy day. I'm Bendikian Saila. Happy Sabbath. Happy day. I'm Grace Washeke. And my name is um, Sinet Mose, one of the panelists of the day. Okay, thank you so much, Teacher Senate, uh, one of our teachers here at Nairobi Central Teens Class. So our lesson today, as uh, we've been told, it's apply the blood, apply the blood. Uh, the previous lesson we studied about, you know, I see, I hear, I know, talking about the way the Lord sent Moses to deliver the Israelites from captivity. Now, in our lesson today, we're going to touch on how the Israelites finally come out of Egypt. But before we get into that, I'm always, I'm always the story guy, so uh, we have a story I'm going to share before we get into the story. So, sometime in around 2003, there were some three young missionaries, okay? They were in a theology school, you know, starting to become pastors and missionaries, but these guys were a bit naughty, so to speak. So, they were supposed to be in class. This was somewhere in South Africa, but these three young men... Uh, that was Chris, Norman, and a young man called Busi, Busiswe, right? So Chris, Norman, and Busi decided that they want to go swimming, all right, somewhere in the, in the beach. So on the day that they were supposed to be in class, they decided to skip class and go to the beach. So two of them, that is uh, Busi and Norman, went to the car, but Chris remained behind because he went to get his surfboard. He wanted to go surf in the waves, and he knew some very good place that he'd been told by his friends he could go surf. So the three of them, they snuck out of the meeting and went there. But some of the other students saw them sneaking out. So these guys just went. They just assumed no one saw them. But something funny happened. Along the way, they got lost. They did not know where they were going. And uh, Chris had the number of someone who was in charge of that beach. So he called that number asking for directions, but no response. They still kept getting lost. So they asked someone at the petrol station to give them the, the direction to where they were going to. And the guy just told them, but he wasn't so sure about the directions. So they went, drove a bit, very, very good BMW. But then they got on a rough road. And this is a place, you know, sorry to speak this, but BMW wasn't really meant to handle. And the car was shaking in some ways that it's not supposed to shake. And they realized that they were really lost. So time went two hours in, they decided let's just turn back to the college, this is a hopeless course. So they go back to the college, they're late for lunch, lunch is over, they didn't go for class. And once they arrive, Chris was the one who was driving the car, he just reaches under his car seat to pick his wallet as he's going out, and guess what he finds? A booklet of the place they were going with a detailed map of directions, every single place they were supposed to pass through including contacts of people they should have called in case they got lost. <laughs> now, you can imagine how bad these people felt, right? Now, how does this connect to our story today? Can apply the blood. Now, the Israelites also had a blueprint, a sort of a map as to what they needed to do to avoid calamity or getting lost. And this was when uh, the Lord was bringing the 10th plague, right? We know the 10 plagues. Uh, the Lord showed in, um, in Egypt to get Pharaoh to release the Israelites. So for the 10th plague, as you'll see in our lesson, they were to apply blood somewhere. We'll, we'll read that in the lesson. So the Israelites actually followed the map or the guideline to what they were supposed to do, and they did not get lost. Okay? So now that we have a bit of a background as to what is happening, I'd like to ask um, Salmon to read us Matthew 26, verse 28. Matthew chapter 26, verse 28. And probably you can uh, give us some highlights on what do you think about that. 
Okay, Matthew 26, verse 28. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Mm, mm. That is Christ talking about his own blood. You know, Christ's blood was a sign that we've been cleansed from our sins. Salmon, uh, kindly just take us to the what do you think section as we get more insight into this. Okay. So, we're told to say whether we pref- what we prefer in the what do you think sections which I'm going to go through and why you prefer the question. So, Silas, do you prefer to have money in your bank account but not to have access to it? You have the money, it's in your account, but you can't use it. You can't, it's there, it's sitting in your bank in your bank account. No, no. Why? Okay, because it's frustrating. Like, you have money. Money is what everyone looks for. Mm-hmm. So here you have it, but you don't have access to it. You can't use it. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, Grace, uh, would you prefer to have a car without the keys to start it or license to drive it? No. Because <laughs> it would be useless. I mean, yeah. you don't have the license, so even if you did have the keys, you're, you're not like fit to drive, legally speaking. And even if you did have the license but you don't have the keys, there is no way you can get that car anywhere. So, no. Okay, I'd like to say this. If you have <coughs> the car, you don't have the keys, so you probably don't have a license. If you don't have a license, it's not a big problem because you can hire a driver. But without the keys, even the driver is useless. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, I like sense. that thing. But yeah. I think in this case, um, what uh, my friend is trying to say is that um, like you own this car, it's yours. Mm-hmm. So the thing is, like, yes, you have a car, but you don't have uh, the driving license and then the key. These are two key things that you need to have for you to drive this car. Once you don't have them, then it's, it's like you don't have a car. Or you have it, but it's like <laughs> those things that sometimes you buy for the kids and then they play with. It's like a toy. Yeah. So the thing is, like, once you have this car, you must have the, the driving license and then you must have the keys. Yeah. So without the two, then you're nothing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's take a little illustration here. So... You can hire a driver, right? But you don't have the keys. Mm -hmm. This story is about applying the lamp, the Mm. blood, the blood from the lamp. Mm. The final lamp, which Mm. was the final sacrifice, Mm -hmm. was Jesus. You can't replace Jesus. You Mm. cannot replace because his blood is what matters. The keys are what matter. Mm -hmm. The, The driving license. Driving license is like holy people, like angels. Angels do not sin. There are other worlds out there. The people there do not sin. But here, none of those people, because they have the driving license, they cannot come. None of them were eligible to die for our sins. Only Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So the most important thing here is to have the Holy Spirit in your life so you can be light to those in the darkness. Amen. 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 I like exactly. that mm-hmm. So yes, if, um, maybe I can add on to what uh, he said. He talked something about uh, the blood, the blood of Jesus. It's, it's what we need. We look at Jesus to be like, his blood is like um, our hope of salvation. Once you take the blood of Jesus, your life will never be the same. So if you look at... Uh, the Israelites, they were given like, it was like a, co- a, a covenant. Like they had to use um, the blood of the lamb. And now this lamb is the hope of salvation that for us Christians we see like our God. So once you take um, this blood, it's like your soul has been changed. Your soul has been purified mm. once you take it. And your life will never be the same. Amen. So with these things... If we observe uh, the covenant of God, then it's like we'll be the light, the way he has put it. And the light, once the light, it's on, 
everyone can be able to see. Amen. True. The world can True. be able to see mm. the light through our deeds. If only we be obedient to to God and have faith in him. Amen. Amen. So uh, I think the the point the whole point of the what do you think section thank you Salmon for taking us through that is to show us to show us that we might have some things in this life but as long as you don't have the 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 very the most important part of that thing it's practically useless to us. Now it applies to us in this way, right? What is the point of Jesus Christ dying for you and me if we don't accept the gift? You know a gift doesn't a gift is not a gift until you receive it. I may just bring um, a whole car to you, Salmon, right now. But what's the point of it being a gift to you if you don't accept it? That is the same thing in our lives right now. Now, the blood of Christ was spilled for our sins, but we have to accept it. The moment you do not accept it, it ceases being as important as it's supposed to be. Okay, so let us move on to our, our story. And I'll ask uh, Silas Reed to read that. Uh, but before we get there, uh, Grace, you can kindly read for us Revelation chapter 1, verse 5. It's also in the punch lines. Okay, it says, <clears throat> Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth, to him who, loved us, who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood. Amen. Now, that verse talks about Jesus Christ, and so does our story. So let us see what our story talks and how it connects to Jesus Christ. Silas, take us through the, into the story today. So in this story, we are talking about, it's from the book of Exodus, chapter 12, the whole of that chapter. So in this story, we are learning about the 10th plague, how the Israelites left. So here, Moses is being given the directions on what to do. Silas, look loudly. On what to do so that he can, they cannot be, the firstborns of the family are not killed. So these are the, the directions. This month is to be the, for you the first month, the first month of the year. Tell the whole community of Israel. So they were supposed to take a lamp for each family, one for each household. If a household is too small, they should join with another so that they can eat all the, the whole lamb and finish it in that night. So they were told to kill the lamb and apply the blood on their dope that when the angel of death comes, he can see the marks mm -hmm. and skip those houses. Mm -hmm. So the animal they were supposed to choose must be a year old male. Mm -hmm. And it shouldn't have any defect. So we learned that they needed the best. Mm -hmm. Only the best. Of the sheep they have. Mm -hmm. Okay. So mm -hmm. they were supposed to take care of them until the 14th day of the month when all the members of the community of Israel must slaughter them. Mm -hmm. so, Probably I could uh, interject a bit, sorry to cut in through. I think we can draw some parallels from what you've said, Silas. Thank you. So the animals that were chosen, right, there were also some more instructions about it. They were not supposed, their bones were not supposed to be broken. Mm -hmm. And then they were supposed to be chosen on the 10th day of the month, but they're supposed to be slaughtered four days later. Now, here's a very interesting thing. If we can all flip to the did you know section of our lesson, we will see why this is very interesting. Okay, so this is the first point in the did you know section. We're told that Jesus came into the city of Jerusalem four days before the lamb was killed in the temple as a Passover sacrifice. So Jesus literally, um, the Passover in the Israelite time, the, when the Israelites were in Egypt, was a parallel to what Jesus was supposed to do, right? Because we see what were the Israelites supposed to do. Um, they're supposed to pick the lamb ten days uh, on the 10th day of the month. That's four days before they kill it. And Christ came to Jerusalem four days before he was sacrificed, before he was crucified. 
Okay, that shows that Christ is the lamb. And then we also have the second thing, right? Um, the second thing is that the bones of the lamb are not supposed to be broken. And we see in Jesus' death in John chapter 19, verse 33, when Christ died, not a single bro bone in his body was broken. So it is a literal parallel between the lamb offered during the Passover and Jesus Christ and the way he died. Okay? Uh, Silas, probably can uh, finish to us what, what they did with the blood, where did they apply it, and probably some questions from out of the story. Okay, so we'll head to the questions. What is the significance of the blood? Okay, for me, I think the significance of the blood is the blood of Christ. It symbolizes the blood of Christ. What do you think, Simon? The blood was a symbol to show of what was coming, as Jonas said, a parallel of the end. The end, which was Jesus Christ on the cross, so the blood was also a sign at that time. Was a sign for the angel of death to pass over the houses, but it symbolized Jesus' blood on the cross as the final sacrifice. And I think also we can uh, get some insights from Greece. Uh, you know, just to lead you through it, uh, you can open Genesis chapter nine. I already have, and mm -hmm. from what I've seen, yeah. that especially if you, if you read the fourth verse, mm -hmm. no need to even go any further, but you shall not eat flesh with its life, that is blood. So blood has been kind of paralleled with life, and as you can see in the story of the Passover, if they smeared blood on the doorposts of their houses, the lives of the firstborn were spared. Mm -hmm. So like blood, like, Kind of like led to life, something like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. True, true. For well, another question, Silas? What emerges as the central lesson of this story? Mm -hmm. This Mr. can give us why. What's the main lesson from this story? Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Teacher Jonan. You may think uh, the whole thing of uh, blood, once you take the blood of Jesus Christ, um, it's like it gives you life, not like uh, the way we know, like uh, this life after, after death. So once you take the blood of Christ, it's like your life has been um, purified. It has been changed. And that's the, the main reason as to why um, they were commanded, like they have to apply blood at their doorposts. One thing, it was like um, when the angel of death will come, and it's like he will jump, go to the next door, and then we kill like the, the firstborn arm. Um, of the Egyptians. But in this case, uh, one thing it was like, uh, this blood, it kind of, uh, it sanctifies you. It changes your life. It changes your soul. It makes you a, uh, a new being once you take um, the blood of Jesus Christ. And this, it shows you how powerful the blood of the Lamb is. Amen. Amen. And just, uh, it's a good thing you mentioned about the Passover and jumping over the house. Actually, that's a very great misconception that we've grown to, you know, be knowing in our lives. But uh, studying this lesson, I came across something very interesting. So the English translation of the word to Passover does not do justice to the Hebrew word. The Hebrew word is Pesa. And Pesa, it's a verb which refers to protection. So the Lord did not cause, the blood did not cause the angel of death to jump over the house. But rather what it means is that the Lord shielded that house from death. Okay? So Passover doesn't literally mean like Passover as we're used to, but it means like the Lord shielded those houses with the blood on the doorposts. Um, thank you for that. So uh, we'll have a brief song from uh, the orchestra, song Hymn 294, Power in the Blood, and then we'll proceed from there.
power in the blood. That is uh, the hymn we've just listened to. And it really speaks to us and uh, connects the lesson we were talking about, you know, the power of the blood of Christ. In uh, the Israelite time, we've seen it had the power to save the lives of the firstborn children. But in our lives right now, it has the power to save each and every one of us. I'll ask uh, Salmon to read for us Revelation chapter 3, verse 20. Revelation 3, verse 20. And probably before you go to that, you can uh, read the key text for today. Okay, the key text is from Exodus 12, 7 and 13. Then they are to take some of the blood and put it on the sides and on the tops of the door frames of the houses where they eat the lambs. The blood will be a sign for you from the houses where you are, and when I see the blood, I will pass over you. No destructive plague will touch you when I strike Egypt. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, before you give us your insight into that, I can uh, just read through Revelation chapter 3, verse 20, and then you can combine those two verses. So Revelation 3, 20 says, Look, I stand at the door and knock. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and we will share a meal together as friends. Now, these are two doors we see in these two verses. Uh, Salmon probably can uh, draw some questions from those two verses. Okay, I have one question here. So, uh, hmm. what then do you think it means to have the blood of the lamb on your door? Sure, you're just from saying that in Hebrew, it meant protection. Yes, protection. Being shielded. Mm -hmm. Having the blood is having a shield. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not just a normal shield. It's a spiritual shield mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which protects you from all sorts of evil. In this case, in the Bible, it was protecting them from, it was protecting the Israelites and anyone else who applied it from the plague. In our time, we are not really meant, we are not, we cannot just apply blood on our door frames. True, true. Mm -hmm. So, what you need to do is grace. Mm -hmm. Jesus died for us, he'll save us by grace. Mm. not by work, so we have grace, we have faith mm -hmm. that you will protect us and shield us. You will do that for us. Amen. Amen. And speaking of grace, <laughs> grace can give us probably some insight what she thinks about that question. I've also seen that this blood is also a, it's like an allegory of our works. In order to explain, I'm going to have to go to the flashlight section, mm -hmm. which as usual, comes from Patriarchs and Prophets. This particular quote comes from page 278, stretching all the way to 279. And it says, Before obtaining freedom, the bondmen must show their faith in the great deliverance about to be accomplished. The token of blood must be placed upon their houses. Had the Israelites disregarded in any particular the directions given them, they would not have been secure. By obedience, the people were to give evidence of their faith. So all who hope to be saved by the merits of the blood of Christ should realize that they themselves have something to do in securing their salvation. Man is to be saved by faith, not by works, yet his faith must be shown by his works. He must appreciate and use the helps that God has provided. Mm. So basically what, what she's trying to say here that, is that in the case of the Israelites, it is not exactly doing all that stuff that would save them. Mm -hmm. it, the, like the fact that they were trusting in God and doing what they told him to do, what, what he told them to do is what actually saved them. Mm -hmm. And if they could have, you know, done everything but missed one thing, like let's say gotten the right lamb, slaughtered it the right way, cooked it the right way, but failed to apply the blood on the doorposts, for example, they, the firstborn in that family would have died. True, true. Mm -hmm. So here what they're trying to say is, in order for us to be delivered, there is a part we must play. Now, don't get me wrong. We are not saved by our works. We mm -hmm. are saved 
exclusively by grace through faith. But Amen. there is something we must do. Mm -hmm. Yes, Jesus' blood cleanses us, but it can't cleanse us unless we accept mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and trust him and do as he says. So this is what it's trying to tell us here. And Amen. Now, Amen. And also then, also you know, me, yes, 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 it. And also you may add something to what um, she said and also what he said. Sometimes um, obedience, I think, it's uh, the key thing here. We cannot be saved if you are not obedient to him. We have to believe in him, have faith in him, and then believe like he's the one who has given this chance to spread the word of God. So once we, we obey whatever he tells us, then it comes easier for us to be saved also. Because we cannot um, do what he has uh, directed us to do, and then we relax like, yeah, now we are going to be saved by God. The way she said it, like, like uh, we have to play our part. And our part, it's actually to faith in him and then to be obedience to him also. Because if you look at uh, the call of the uh, Moses and then the task that he was given, the first thing that uh, he told the, uh, the children of Israel was like, yes, I'm here, I've been sent by, by the Most High. But for me to do this, you have to be obedient. Amen. 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 And also just uh, before we move on to the next part, um, as Grace had said, you know, we, we are not saved by our works. We are saved by the faith and the grace, you know, that Christ has given unto us. But how do we really show our faith? You know, James said that faith without actions is dead, right? We are saved by grace through faith, but we demonstrate our faith through works. So you guys got that, right? We are saved by grace through faith, but... That faith is demonstrated in our works. So our actions speak to showing that we have faith in God. And that's how we accept his saving grace for us. Yes, Salman. Uh, as you have said that our actions define our faith. By doing the wrong thing, you're not defining God's faith. Mm -hmm. You're defining the wrong faith. That's what Grace was trying to say. We are not saved by our work. Mm -hmm. So you're doing good, but you don't have any faith in God. Really, it's one and the other. Mm. Faith and works have to go hand in hand. They have to go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. But for you to be in heaven, you will not go there because of what you did. You gave people food. Mm. Why did you give them? Because you wanted them to elect you. <laughs> not quite a good example, but... Mm -hmm. It shows you helping them were not the, you didn't have the right intentions for people. Mm, true, you can true. be helping people to lure them into a trap. Mm -hmm. But by having faith in God mm -hmm. and showing that faith, mm -hmm. which is works, mm -hmm. that's how you're going to be in heaven. Amen. Amen. And uh, also, thank you for that were, insight. Yes. So if I were to add on that, even mm -hmm. let's say that it's all good motive, not helping people to get them into a trap. Mm -hmm. Like, in the end, I think it boils down to who you're doing it for. True. Because you could be doing it to make yourself look good, mm -hmm. or you could be doing it to, you know, as God said, when you feed the hungry, clothe mm -hmm. the naked, mm -hmm. visit those in prison, you're doing it for me. True. So either you're doing it for your glory or his glory. And if you're doing it for your glory, that's not going to count. Amen. Yeah. And I like you've brought that in, because that also ties up into our fundamental belief for this lesson and our fundamental belief is belief number let me get it belief number eight that is a great controversy all right this is one of the few things that the adventist faith has unique and that's the fight between good and evil god and the devil and uh, in previous lessons in our class we had learned about you know where lucifer came from and who he is okay and as grace has said this is a fight where you don't get to sit on the fence you either choose one side or another. You're either on God's side or on the devil's side. In this like time, you either did what God asked you to do, that is to apply blood on the doorpost, or you did not. There was no in-between. Even God says in Revelation, you are lukewarm. I will spew you out of my mouth. God does not like people who are indecisive. You have to take a stand in this life. So for us, it's either do you accept the blood of Jesus or do you not? Now, then, Mr. Senate, you can uh, give us, uh, as we move to the punchlines because of time, 
Uh, you can give us probably one of the verses which speaks to you mostly, and then you uh, can choose two other people who can give us those verses. Okay, for me, I'll go with uh, First John 1 John 1.7, and it says, uh, mm. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have uh, fellowship with uh, one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. Yeah. Amen. Amen. If we walk in the light, you know, we, we have in the, light. the blood of Jesus. Thank you for that. You can choose like two other people. Just give and us then, what you um, think the, of the other one, I can go with uh, Salman and then Silas. So for me, what speaks to me is Hebrews 13, 12 and 13. And so Jesus also suffered outside the city gate to make the people holy through his own blood. Let us then go to him outside the camp, bearing the disgrace he bore. Jesus is God. This is God coming to us, suffering, staying outside the city gate, which was a disgrace because of you. And you're the one who really don't care. Really, just imagining, just imagine the president of whatever country you come from. I wouldn't imagine the president living outside the best of the place, the most secure place. I wouldn't imagine mm -hmm. him living in the border of the country, with his, with of the very country secure, which is yeah. very... Mm -hmm rough and mm. there are wars sometimes. Mm -hmm. He's sitting in the most secure place. Mm, true. But mm. this is God, the creator. Mm -hmm. He came down to earth to give us his blood because mm -hmm. of our own we made the problem, he brought the solution mm -hmm. but mm. we still don't want to take the solution. Mm. So this just just speaks to me because at the end he says, let us then go out, outside the camp, bearing mm -hmm. the disgrace he bore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Let's be like Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Salomon. Yes, we can uh, get a word from Silas. Which verse okay, speaks to you? Mm -hmm. Matthew 26, 16 to 20. Mm -hmm. It says, this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out of many for the forgiveness of sins. Mm -hmm. Jesus poured out his blood so that he can forgive us our sins. Amen. The blood of Christ is, cleanses us. You know, there's power in the blood to cleanse us. And also, if I may, mm -hmm. I also really liked Romans 5, 8 to 9, which says, But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? Like this reminds me of something I read in Patriarchs and Prophets. When God delivered the Israelites, they were not perfect. I mean, they had lived in Egypt for so long and, in, and they had like so much influence from the heathen culture that the Egyptians had. They had so many gods and, you know, had, they had no, no respect for God's laws or anything. Like in the fact that they made them slaves, that means that they totally forgot about the Sabbath, for example, mm -hmm. and also worshipped the Egyptian gods if they, like if the pressure became too much for them. God did not wait for them to, you know, keep the Sabbath again or like turn away from the idols completely. Mm -hmm. Although, of course, he showed them through the plagues that, you know, heathenism is fake. Like these gods are not real. Mm -hmm. I'm the true God. But he didn't wait for them to like, fully become perfect in order for him to save them. He saved them first, and now that's when he revealed his law to them. Amen, amen. And while you're still at it, Grace, thank you for that. Um, you can read for us the quote from uh, the Thursday section by someone called Eden Achbez. You can probably read that quote for us. So it's a very profound word. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the quote reads, the greatest thing you'll ever learn is just to love and be loved in return. And th there's no greater thing that we human beings desire. It's just love, the, mo the feeling of belonging somewhere. Right? And that, that quote just encompasses it all. Uh, Teacher Senate, yeah. uh, as we close up, you can read for us First Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7 and 8, and uh, give us what, what you think about it. 
Okay. Our uh, first Corinthians uh, chapter 5 7 to 8 and uh, it reads God has made full provision for us to be saved. We are headed for for heaven when we turn to him. Take his provision and start moving in that direction. In this week's lesson we have been uh, looking at uh, um, apply the blood. Something very interesting. And when you look at um, during the times of uh, Moses, when he went like to deliver the children of Israel from, uh, from Egypt and then uh, to the promised land. As I said earlier, one thing that he was told was like, uh, he told the children was like, obedience is the key for your salvation. They had to believe like in, in God was given them was given them a chance to to live so when moses was um in the house with the pharaoh uh this one thing he did when he told the the, the pharaoh like uh, i've been given a message by jehovah to come and deliver to you one thing he asked is like who is this jehovah who is superior than than me and my gods moses had to perform the miracle that he did of uh the rod that he had he made it a serpent one thing that uh, the Pharaoh did, he brought uh, his, his people, those people from the devil, and they were like, they produced their own serpents. But God had to, to show them, like, I'm the God who created you. The serpent of Moses swallowed all the, all the Egyptian serpents that they had. He tells us one thing. All the things that God can give, except life, even the devil has a counterfeit mm -hmm. of it. Sure. Even the, when we have looked at um, the fundamental belief number eight, the great controversy, mm -hmm. this is the controversy that we have today between the, uh, the people who believe in God and those people who believe in the world. Mm -hmm. The children of Israel, they lived in Egypt and they became, they believed in the culture of the Egyptians. Mm -hmm. But that was not what God wanted. God wanted them to worship him mm -hmm. and believe in him. Mm -hmm. When we look at our lives today, we are in this world and the only thing that keeps coming into our lives is that God is warning us. Like, yes, you are in this world, but don't be of this world. Mm -hmm. God has given us the channels and the avenues for us to be, to be saved. And he's telling us, like, you have to believe in me. Mm -hmm. Take my blood. Mm. And your life will never be the same. If only we can believe in him and follow him, then things will be easier for us. We have to be obedient to him, and then we have to have faith in him and trust in him. And then we move from the lives of this world and believe in the Lamb and the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for all your insights, uh, panelists. So we've come to the end of the lesson today. And uh, I'd like just the panelists to just give uh, one word, uh, parting short, as, uh, as we close up. For 30 seconds or so. You can start from uh, someone. Okay, so for me, I'd say follow directions strictly. Grace said that if they hadn't just followed one, one strict direction, they will, the first one will have ended up dead. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So let's just try and follow instructions. Follow instructions. Yeah. Thank you for that. Silas, uh, your last word. What do you learn from this story today about the blood of Jesus? That you cannot be given something. Mm. Even if it is free, you have to first accept it. And there are always terms and conditions for mm -hmm. it. You have to accept the, the gift of the blood of Jesus Christ. Yes. Thank you for that. Grace, your last word. Faith and works go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Israelites, after seeing all the plagues, believed that God is indeed going to rescue them from bondage. Mm -hmm. But if they had just believed and not have done what they were told by God to do, apply blood on the doorpost, get the right lamb, slaughter it the right way, cook it the right way, and all those instructions, mm -hmm. they wouldn't have, like their firstborn would have died. So... Faith and works have to go hand in hand. Thank you for that. Did you send it? Uh, my parting shot is um, God has given us different uh, gifts. For these gifts to be seen in our lives, uh, we have to show them to the world. Mm -hmm. God has given us these um, 
gift to deliver other people out of bondage. The obstacles are there, but one thing God has given us a sign. People can harden their hearts the way the Pharaoh did, but they start thinking that we can whisper to them and they will change their lives. God will come and he will ask you, like, I gave you this gift. What did you do with it? We have the blood. We just have to have faith in him and be obedient to our maker. That's Amen. the only way we can be able to be saved from the hands of this world. Amen. Amen. And for me, uh, the Lord gave the blood of his son, Jesus Christ, so that he can be saved. The only thing we need to do is accept it. So there is power in the blood of Jesus. And Jesus' blood just saves us from so many things. Those, you know, addictions you have right now, those pains you have in your life right now, just accept the blood of Jesus in your life and all is going to be well. So thank you so much for being with us for this session. And uh, I'd like to ask Silas to pray with us as we close. Let's pray. Our Father, who is above in heaven, we thank you this day. We thank you for the love you have given us, even your blood. We pray that you may help us accept it. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Amen.